Awesome. So I'm going to share my screen because I'm personally learning this right now. And I know a lot of people have no idea what's going on in here. We're going to be breaking down EtherScan and how to read it, how to read contract addresses, how to read specific transactions, how to read um, entire token addresses. If you're using OpenSea NFTs, if you're trading at all, this is going to be a very beginner because I'm not an expert at this. I've just taught myself uh, the basic functions that I need to try and make some money and try and build some stuff in this world. So I hope this is helpful for you. So let's jump in. Let's start with EtherScan's homepage. EtherScan is basically reading the entire uh, Ethereum blockchain and presenting it in a way that's readable and searchable for us. So on their homepage, you can see EtherScan uh, show the Ethereum price right now. So you can see right now it is at 2,800, almost 2,900 US dollars. It's always funny to watch these videos a year later to see if it's gone way up or way down. So I'll be coming back and having a look at that. The total market cap, $341 billion. Uh, and then over here, how many transactions it's got. The medium gas price. Uh, now gas price is measured in GUE, which is giga way. Um, and to give you a very basic description, way is basically a small, very, very small percentage of an ETH of, of an Ethereum. So way is basically like cents and ETH are basically like dollars or that sort of that, that relationship with each other. Um, and then down here, you can see the latest blocks that have been mined onto the uh, blockchain. You can see this is in numerical order because the way the blockchain works is there's a block that the miner uh, puts onto the blockchain and then it, the next miner puts the next block on and it's literally the block, it becomes a chain of individual blocks. Now, what makes up a block? Tra a bunch of transactions. I'm not exactly sure how many transactions. Each blockchain is different and that's why there's like some blockchains that support way more transactions per block, which is uh, one of the reasons why it's cheaper. But uh, there's a bundle of transactions. We'll go into one block. So you can see those 342 uh, transactions in that one block here. Where something like this one down here only had 14 transactions. This is how much the miner got rewarded for mining that block onto the blockchain. So that's the basics. Um, you want to come over here to resources, charts and statistics. This is a theory, uh, Etherscan's way of showing you some of the, the best stats in here. So you can see the Ethereum price. Uh, this is the graph here at the moment for that. Um, you can see things like um, the market cap breakdown. And basically it shows you in really cool graphs. Uh, you can see the blockchain data here, daily transaction charts. So how much is Ethereum actually being used? Um, and this is obviously shows you is it being adopted more? Is it being adopted less? Is therefore, is, is the price going to go up or down? Um, you can come in and have a look at these graphs. They display all these stats very, very well in there. Very simply though. Now, what I want to do is come over to a contract address that I had. That I just pulled this one up because it searched my Google Chrome history. This is an NFT project called dot, dot, dot. And basically for every um, dollar that Ethereum is priced at, one NFT gets minted. So whatever the all-time high is, say it was $4,800, there's 4,800 dot, dot, dot tokens. But you can see we're viewing the contract address. So this is an overview of that contract and who's actually minting um, or transferring these uh, NFTs or these tokens um, within that contract. But what I want to do is actually go into something that's uh, more, regularly, <laughs> more regularly used first. So we can come and we can see James M. Cardle.eth has his own custom um, in ENS name, uh, Ethereum name, because uh, uh, you know everybody has, I'll show you. We come back here, a random string of numbers, which is your address, but you can customize it like James Cardle has uh, by going to ENS. I don't actually know the exact ENS.domains. You can purchase one of them there. But this is. James's wallet overview. So there's his address up here. So you can see up here um, wh where we started, it said contract because it's a contract um, we're looking into. And now we're looking into a specific address, James's address. Uh, so it says it right here, uh, what his actual numerical, alphanumerical string is. So you can see he's got 2.6 ETH in his wallet because everything, once again, is transparent. You can see everything uh, so currently $7,500 of value of Ethereum, specifically Ethereum. And then any Ethereum-based coins that aren't Ethereum, 
such as ENS, which is the, the domain name service provider. Uh, he also holds their tokens. He holds uh, 12,941 uh, of those tokens, and that's all he um, holds. Now you can see he's got NFTs in here, which we'll jump into in a second. But if you ever wanted to analyze someone's wallet, come in and click this little button here, expanded view. Now this will show you listed out with a little icon and everything, how much people, uh, the person owns of every single uh, one of the currencies that they're owning on Ethereum. I won't show you obviously stuff like Binance. Uh, their estimated net worth, what that is in US dollars. And it also shows you NFTs. So you can see he's got 26 NFT assets. And you scroll down to NFT assets and I'll show you exactly what they are. You can see they're mainly uh, name services. So the actual domain names he seems to be a big fan of. Jailed Baby Ape Club, he's got this token here. Sketchy Ape Book Club, he's got Shaq Gives Back. Uh, and obviously he holds a dot, 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 which is where he, we found him originally, a crypto chick in there. Uh, and you can see what, um, if you're not on OpenSea, what other tokens they're holding there. Or you could go and you can search on OpenSea and see it in that setting over there as well. Something that is commonly uh, requested is from OpenSea, how do you find the contract address? So if we go over to just some of the top projects at the moment, uh, we can see CryptoPunks is up the top. So we might as well just use him. We click on it. We find any of these punks and we go into the actual uh, page. That's cool. I didn't know they had some with the, uh, the red nose on it. Uh, and you scroll down into details. Now, remember, you want to make sure it's a verified collection. If, if it's a popular collection, it should be verified. Don't get tricked there. Click on contract address. That'll pull the contract up just like with a dot, dot, dot contract uh, for you to be able to read. So you can see, you can see things like the balance of the actual contract or the wallet that holds that contract has over 5,600 Ethereum in it. Now that's coming in when Ethereum, uh, it should be a Lava Labs sort of owned contract. When someone, people are trading these crypto punks, they get a percentage that's coming back in uh, and the owner of the wallet can come in here and actually uh, withdraw that. Um, you can see other tokens that have been in here will basically just be airdrops and some potential scams in here. Uh, that's going on. Uh, but you go down here and you can see the individual transactions. So transaction hash, that's the uh, that code for that individual transaction. What it actually is, is it an offer? Um, here we go, here's a withdrawal. Um, he is bids uh, and there'll be things just like direct transfers as well. Um, especially once we get into tokens, which I'll show you. You could go and see an individual transaction, which we'll get into in a second. Uh, the other thing I want to show you in here is the analytics over here. A lot of people don't know this exists, but it shows you with that contract, what sort of volumes going through uh, over time, which is also really cool to look at and analyze. Now, what I want to actually show you is if we come back to the Etherscan homepage or just use that search bar, you can actually search an entire token. So something like Polygon. Now, Polygon uh, is on top of also known or used to be known as Matic. Um, it's on top of the Ethereum blockchain. It's a layer two. So uh, you can actually see all of its transactions in here. Uh, just like you're looking at a contract address for an NFT. Now we're looking at the contract address for the entire blockchain on top of Ethereum, which is Matic. Now, up here, you can see its current price, how many in supply there is, how many people are actually holding it, which is a really cool little graph in here. You can see it's going up over time. Um, how many transfers have actually been made with it. Um, all the official site and social media is over here, which is very cool. A lot of people don't know this. And then down here, the individual actual transactions. So you can see a transfer here from Coinbase, which will, is a centralized exchange, to an individual wallet. Uh, 2,000 Matic were transferred. You can see then there's these more uh, swaps, the decentralized ones going from one wallet to another wallet. So a super cool feature that I didn't know existed are uh, holders here. For the Polygon token or the Matic token, you can actually see who the biggest holders are of that. And you can see uh, Polygon themselves, they've got their plasma bridge, their vesting contract and their staking contracts, all the functions that they're using. have literally billions of dollars of uh, Polygon or Matic set up in there, which is crazy. Then you see the biggest exchanges, uh, Binance, Binance, Binance US, Crypto.com, have $100 million worth of Polygon sitting in their um, wallet. Uh, Bitfinex, you can see FTX, here they are all holding ridiculously large amounts of sums. And then the crazy stuff is the private wallets, just 
random individuals who are holding tens of millions or hundreds of millions of dollars uh, worth of tokens, uh, which is pretty impressive. Okay, the last thing we have to show you is uh, inside an actual transaction. So in the NFT world, I'll show you how to get to that individual transaction and how to actually read it to the best of my ability. Uh, so let's go to um, the actual activity. Uh, and you can see this one was sold for $209,000 five hours ago. So we're going to click on that and it opens it up in Etherscan. Now the transaction hash here, the actual code for that transaction. Uh, obviously it was a successful transaction. The block number that it went into, remember the blocks are a bundle of transactions. This went in with another 1,330 other uh, transactions. Um, it happened five hours and one minute ago now on Etherscan. They're going to show you how long ago it happened, but normally if you hover over that, it'll show you exactly the time and date uh, that it actually happened from, where did it actually go from, and then where did it go to? And I went through a this smart contract here, which is the CryptoPunks uh, contract. How much was actually paid for it in Ether and then the US dollars given the price of Ether at that time. Now, this is always going to be the price of ETH at that time. Uh, and then the gas price, how much was paid in gas? Now, you can see it was 51 guay. Remember, guay or gigaway is sort of like a real small fraction of ETH. Now, I'm still learning a lot about Etherscan. I'm still learning about all these scans and uh, blockchain explorers for different blockchains. I think it's something that's really important that I get educated on because I'm going to want to uh, be able to read this, be able to know what's going on with individual transactions and especially for our project coming up, how to actually find OG projects, how to find these NFT projects that were minted onto the blockchain years ago, but are uncovered. So I'm looking at uh, breaking down this blockchain explorer, understanding how to look and bulk look into these transactions to see some really old uh, transactions because the thing with Web3 is everything is documented, everything is here for everybody to search it's entirely decentralized. So once again, if you wanted to be, uh, and I, we always put these at the end of our podcast, but if you want to be uh, following to get the updates, if we uncover an OG project, or if we uncover anything that could be profitable to you and our community, make sure you follow our Twitter. We'll link it up in the description below.